What's up, people? Here today with a full series review of Murderbot by Martha Wells, The Murderbot Diaries. And I just, I just finished Fugitive Telemetry, and I didn't realize that that was that's actually part five if you want to go in order. So this is my non-spoiler review, kind of for the first minute, and then I'll tell you when I get into spoilers. But uh, yeah, in case you didn't know, now you know. I also read the the short story that's uh, it's online. You could get, read it free. It's only a, probably a couple pages. But yeah, so I read it all. I'm an expert now. Not really. I'm just, you know. But uh, if you don't know the story of Murderbot, it's about uh, what they call a sec unit, a security unit. And this the world takes place in a very corporate driven universe. Everybody, there's uh, the corporate room where everything's just as bad as you, it sounds. Everything's run by corporations. Uh, nobody cares about you. Mining facilities, slave labor, lots of danger. Alien relics on some of the planets. But Murderbot here, his job, her job, is an it is uh, to is a security unit, and it's designed to kill humans basically and protect humans. But somewhere before the book starts, it, it learns how to hack its system. Uh, you know how Asimov has the three laws of robotics? It learns how to hack those. You know, you can't hurt a human. You have to listen to a human. You don't interfere with humans or whatever it was. But it learns how to hack it. So, it, uh, But as soon as it hacks itself, it goes through kind of an identity crisis. And it, uh, the whole series is connected to, in the first book, you get to meet Dr. M, I call her. I can't pronounce the names, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna call her Dr. M and her crew. She, she's in one of those uh, polymorphous families, I think. I, if I'm using the wrong word, I'm sorry. But when you have multiple husbands and wives, I'm sorry, I don't know the word if I use the wrong word, but you have uh, two wives and a husband or three wives and two husbands or however they want to mix it. I don't know. But and they're from a peaceful planet. They're from a planet that isn't part of the corporate ring. And they discover that Murderbot hacked their system. And the whole story follows Murderbot trying to figure out who he is. And uh, the evil corporation that's trying to hurt his family, his newfound family. So that's my non-spoiler review. Uh, if you haven't read it, read it. It's, it's very humorous. Very... It makes you feel good about the human spirit sometimes. Because Murderbot, it, he, she, it is a cyborg. So it has that human component in it. And it's trying to figure out who it is and it's getting, it, it goes through emotional problems, but it handles it in a, a very mechanical way. And it's very well written. If you haven't read it, okay, I'm going to start talking about the book now so I can remind myself when I pick up number seven, just how everything went. So the first book, as far as I can recall, this is going to be off my memory. The first book starts with Murderbot already hacked, like I said, and then he... He's on a mission on a planet with the family, Dr. M's family. And I think a giant, if I recall correctly, a giant worm attacks them. And then in order to save one of the members, he has to talk them through the, the, the situation. You know, you have, to, you have to come with me, but they're in shock. So he reveals his face and he starts talking to them like a human being. And right away, the, the humans, they pick up on him like, what the fuck is this computer doing? Because in this world, the Murderbot is basically a slave herself, himself, however you want to say it. I always thought about Murderbot as a she, because Martha Wells. I just think of it as a self-insert, I think. But they figured out that, uh, yeah, Murderbot it hacked his unit, or however they say it in there, and that is really dangerous, because you come to find out that he was part of a mass murder, uh, three years ago, whatever they said, and that's why he and before this, his memory was wiped. He kept on uh, the sec units, the sec 
units in this keep they're like droids in star wars you know wipe their memories like any droids or uh, cyborgs and their technology is good and i like the family connection and uh it turns out and then i can't remember the inciting incident but i remember it has to do with uh alien artifacts that uh one base they go visit one base and that's already gone and it turns out the other base kill them there is very episodic so i don't remember all every battle and fight scene and i'm pretty sure i know all the conclusions but if i miss something forgive me please but there is lots of action uh the action is very well written murder bot moves very fast and they say in this book the number one thing since it's a cyborg and everything's it, it heals rapidly too you can put it in the closet or something and it heals the way they attack mostly is just to throw their body at the danger. You uh, protect the humans, just throw your, yeah, I could replace my arm. Even in some of the later books, uh, you could take out, he takes off his arm. I, uh, I'll go through these books. I can't remember yet, honestly, which book it is. But yeah, happy ending. Uh, they saves the family. And I forgot the best part about Murderbot. I've been talking about this shit. I'm sorry. Uh, that they're in love with television and that's a big thing in all the books because throughout the whole series they say oh yeah um this is what this is how i would handle it but then it, uh, she thinks again the murder bot goes well this is how i saw it on tv and i think we all have those moments where that's how it is where <laughs> like yeah this is how they did it on uh Law and Order. <laughs> this is how they did on CSI, right? But the story ends. <coughs> Save the family. Uh, and Dr. M invites Murderbot to come live with us on our peaceful planet. And Murderbot says, okay, at first, but then he sneaks off. And he goes, and then we go into, directly into artificial condition. Yeah, artificial condition where you meet probably everyone's second favorite character or favorite character in this story is art uh, asshole research crew or uh, uh, tractor or whatever it was transport that's what it was okay asshole research transport art and art's just a big I'm not sure if art is hacked too I can't remember but he has pretty much free will because uh, Murderbot gets away by jumping onto ships and bribing them saying hey let me come onto your ship because he could talk to the computers hey uh let me get on there and we can watch tv together but he chooses the wrong one in this book and he chooses art which is some kind of it it says art is supposed to be a research uh unit a transport uh carrying around scientists but you also find out that it's also it's probably some kind of military augmented military because it got a whole bunch of weapons and military grade uh, computers. Like Murderbot's computer is good at hacking and surveillance and all that stuff, but the way they describe art is that it's just a supercomputer and it can navigate the stars because it navigates the stars. It's a supercomputer. And yeah, I keep on forgetting. Uh, I should have mentioned this in my non-spoiler, but. They've got wormholes and everything. I'm enjoying it. I enjoyed uh, all of it. But in this one, um, Murderbot, he goes to investigate the mass murder that he was part of because that's playing on his conscience. And all through the books, you can see that Murderbot's getting more, not depressed, but he does get like anxiety and everything. You can tell that is that he doesn't know what to do and he's trying to figure everything out. And he's not used to not being a slave, basically. But it turns out that, uh, and I think in this one, they have to help another unit, another uh, scientist team, retrie retrieve some data or something, because the evil corporation is everywhere here. The evil corporation, he's trying to find out what, what was the mass murder that he was part of, that he got his memory wiped. And it turns out that another corporation tried to hack him and his sec units the sec units it keeps on saying uh, I, yeah i know what it sounds like but they keep on trying to they try to hack him or no they try to hack the research group but it also hacks the the kill bots so they go crazy and kill everybody and i'm not i can't remember if murderbot was directly involved in them he probably was 
But I, uh, the they got, yeah, they had something to do with the yeah they murdered everybody, but the the pleasure bots were trying to save them, and I can't remember the details, but it, it was a mass murder, so probably everyone ended up dead, and then the company tried to seal uh, cover it up. And yeah, it was good. And Murderbot finds out the truth. He helps out the humans in this one. And then that leads us to number three, Rogue Protocol. I believe I'm going in order. I hope I'm going in order on these ones. Uh, this one is where he, as I said, the whole through line is that there is a through line in this. And there's also, I should have said, when he was, when Dr. M said, hey, can you come live with, you could come live with us. You can't just go missing. You're a kill bot, a murder bot. You're, you, you, yeah, you just can't go missing. <laughs> you're, you're, you're in the system, man. <laughs> you can't just go missing. But um, the evil corporation c come, turns out to try to, they're trying to uh, blackmail Dr. M and her crew. And there's a big old legal battle going on. I, I'm, Dr. M's not in this one. But this is the one where he goes to find evidence about uh, how the big mystery or the big scandal is that the evil corporation is uh, hiding alien artifacts. I guess they can sell on the black market, if I'm rem remembering correctly. But he goes finds the evidence. I'm uh, this one's kind of drawing a blank for me. I remember I uh, this is the one where he fought the. Uh, the combat bots, I believe. I'm not sure, but there's some good. There's good action in all of these ones. This one's coming up as a blame, but this is the one where he goes to find the evidence. And no, this is the one where he meets uh, the other, the other robot, the female bot that uh, the humans in this one, he, who he's trying to help. I can't remember why he's trying to help them. I'm sorry, but with that group of humans. He meets Mickey or Miri, not Miri, Mickey, I think her name is. And she's a robot. She's a bot, a cyborg. And it's his first time meeting a cyborg who gets treated really well. And one of the reasons why he didn't want to go with Dr. M to her planet was because he didn't trust her. He didn't trust anybody. And through this, with uh, meeting Art and those humans and now meeting these humans and how they're treating their uh their cyborg he really he kind of realizes hey yeah and he's getting to found family the found family he's looking for and that's probably why he goes to help dr m too and that's where he says too because yeah this is my first crew yeah uh oh but it ends sad when uh uh mickey uh sacrifices herself to save everybody, I suppose. Like the details are fuzzy, but I remember I was upset about that. She does sacrifice herself, and Murderbot's upset about it. And then that, and everybody else is safe, I believe. A uh, company's going down. The Gray Corp, I think, is called. I can, the evil corporation. So in this one, if I, uh, I should mention this too. These covers are pretty badass, and. Uh, all of them are little scenes in the in the book, so that's good too. I always enjoy that when the <laughs> when the book cover has nothing to do with the book. I am very upset. Where was I? At? Okay, number four, exit strategy. This one was where he goes back to save Doctor M and the original crew from book one. Evil corporations going down, so they're getting desperate. So they kidnap Dr. M and she, uh, Murray Bot reunites with the family, the, the, the family, the mixed family. I'll say it's because I don't know the right word. I am so sorry, I don't know the right word. But the mixed family were husbands and wives and children. He meets them, and it, it's so funny how in every book. He keeps on having to protect these humans that are, they're trying to do good or they're trying to be, and they're not necessarily trying to get in trouble, but they're not wise in the court because they're from the peace for planets. Uh, in this world, sometimes you go through a wormhole and you got lost or the, co the company just got bought out or they lost track of you and you had to survive on your own and though they, sometimes they got lost. And one of the planets is the planet that Dr. M is living on where they grew, they grew up without 
without corporations and free food and the, the paradise we all dream of. And so that's part of the reason why he has to keep on saving these people. Because <laughs> they're just trying to help and they don't understand that Murderbot's job is to protect them, but they're trying to protect it. They keep on calling. I, I have a problem with calling Murderbot it. Maybe that's just in my own head. But every situation that they're in is kind of like they're messing up. They, if they, uh, and Murderbot says it too. It's like, I wish somebody would just <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> and, uh, the whole time, you know, you can tell Murderbot's getting more annoyed and upset. But turns out uh, companies going down. I believe even the company that Dr. M was working with are... Even she got double crossed like there was some kind of ransom and they was like, no, we're not gonna pay that ransom So Murderbot had to go in there and save them, but Good time great action. All these books have great action. I think this is the one where It is the combat bots and he has to jump onto it and he has to stick the grenades on it and jump off That was a cool scene if I remember correctly. There's a couple of cool scenes where he's fighting robots All right, and then we'll go to <coughs> Oh no, we're go. Uh, I just I read the short story. I didn't say how this one ended. Exit strategy ends with uh, him saving Doctor M and the family, and then he's convinced through his journey that he could trust humans and that he really likes Doctor M and the family. And so he goes back, and then the short story, like I said, it's only a couple pages, uh, is Doctor M introducing. Well, uh, Murderbot's not even in the short story. He's off scene. He he's off sh scene, spying on them. So Doctor M is uh, trying to convince the council or one other person that yeah, we're, well we're bringing him. We're bringing him. So it doesn't matter what you say, basically. But in this, you get the hints that uh, Doctor M isn't going through to her. You know, she got kidnapped and people are trying to kill her. It's very traumatic. And uh, her family, this is where they first put that little seed that, yeah, you're, you, you should go to therapy, which is going to come up in the later book. But it also has a little plot, hole, uh, plot line, how does Murderbot get his drones? Because now he needs new drones. He gets new drones in the next book, and this is how she gives the, him drones as a present. And then she gets scared because a journalist comes to sneak onto her property or in her hotel room or something like that. And just a couple pages, but... I completed the series so far. That's what I'm going to say. And then the newest one that just came out that is actually part five is Fugitive Telemetry. That's a cool robot right there too. It's in the book. The I believe this is a bad guy. Yeah. Anyways, this one is really more of a, a detective novella uh not novella a uh, noral kind of thing to it because it is a murder mystery it, it stands alone it's a real standalone because it was i guess it was number it was published number six but it was number five so it kind of have made too big of a it couldn't be too much of a story but this is Murderbot's first uh he's on the new planet uh preserve i think it's called he's on the new planet and he needs a job so and the dead body comes out of nowhere and uh, it's a peaceful planet, so it's a murder, and so everyone's all like, you know, murder, murder. And he's a, he's a security bot, so Dr. M says, yeah, you should work with and get along with the local security team. And it's really about them un uncovering a slave market, where is uh, the planet that he's on now is kind of like a underground railroad, a stop on the underground railroad, because the corporation still has... Uh, slaves and everything and they're evil one of the one of the continuing jokes in all of the books that is probably my favorite is is right when they're all talking to each other and trying to figure out what's wrong and somebody always says like well it could be the corporation but would they do that would the corporation be so evil and kill us like that and everybody's like yeah <laughs> yeah they would do that to us they, they've done it before and cover-ups evil corporation is good the even the the world that they live on the utopia in here they do a good job at explaining the how nobody how weird it is that even getting arrested or minor brawl fights and everything that they have you know it's not a utopia you know they still have they still get drunk and people cheat on each other and violence happens but not like 
slavery. So, but it does good world building and yeah, and uh, they say they uh, figure out the mystery, and that's when he fights. I believe uh, the storyline was um, I just read it. It was the um, Port Authorities, the evil corporation that was enslaving the people, hacked the Port Authorities. Uh, sec unit and caused mayhem and then Murderbot had a battle with him at the end. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That's how it happened. They had a... Uh, all, the, all the bots came together because uh, like they fell out of a window and Murderbot was... Uh, he was struggling with this guy. Yeah, he was a big guy. He was losing maybe. Or I can't remember the details. I, I remember that name though. That uh, they fell out of a window and Murderbot was going to do something or maybe the guy was going to kill him. But then all of a sudden, uh, what was the guy's name? He had a cute name. The robot's name. I can't remember the guy. The, the, but even uh, in the, it was like a ladybird or something like that. And Murderbot, at the, at, when he first met him, like, you let them call you that? You know, and that's the thing too, that Murderbot's figuring out that like, even the other robots, what you figure out too is that it's not just okay murderbot has a problem and you come to realize this too where he thinks he's really alienated where he he thinks people aren't gonna like him so he already he she already puts up a defense and she's coming to realize murderbot it is coming to realize that that you're kind of an asshole yourself you know people are trying to be friendly with you and you're already so defensive that you're you're making you're you're making it hard. <laughs> you're making it harder than yeah, it has to be. Because even the the security guard, not the security guard, the the, the special agent, Murderbot says, oh, I was jealous of that title. <laughs> they said uh, the special agent even says, Yeah, you're not making this easy on me. Or you're the most paranoid person I've ever met. <laughs> That's what they said. What line do I got? Oh, and then this was the one where I, I, I realized that, yeah, it is a diary. Or who, she, who is she writing to? Murderbot, who is she writing to? And it's, um, it's us, I guess. Because in the middle of it, she's talking about, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. And then it, it makes a mistake, which I do like in the whole books. It keeps on making, like, uh, what's, what's an anagram? Or it says, no, is that an anagram? Or, yeah, sometimes. Because it's only as smart as what it downloads. And sometimes the humans don't understand that. And I can't remember what book it was, but they were like, shouldn't you have read this? And he was like, I don't, I didn't care. That's why I didn't do it. I didn't download it. I didn't care. I could have done it. But yeah, in this line, it says, the murder boss talking to himself and it says, it's going through the list. I should have done this. And it says, oh, I didn't mean that. But you know what I mean. It says it. You know what I mean. So who is it talking to? It just kind of took me out of the moment. What's another good line? I pet here. Oh, that's the working history. All right, that's just a little plot line. But uh, yeah, uh, all the robots come together, save Murderbot, or uh, I think the the big bad in that the the scary robot uh, just shuts down when it sees that it can't beat everybody. Happy ending. That goes to Network Effect, the novel, the last one in the series in the storyline and this one is uh this was very good i liked it i'm trying to recap my memory after doing all this this one is uh this one starts on another alien planet that uh oh yeah it, uh, he has to save dr m's family again because they don't tr they're all they're all planning doing research or something and some pirates come up and they go up and say hey how are you doing and they they try to shoot and Murderbot gets shot, of course. And he always says it too. Uh, I always get shot. Either even the uh, people who are trying to protect, I'm trying to protect. Sometimes, sometimes shoot me. And that comes back in uh, the last book, I think. But the big storyline in this one is Art is back, and Art sent some aliens or human who, humans who were affected by aliens to kidnap Murderbot because Art's crew got kidnapped by the aliens first. And uh, this was the return of Art. We all knew he was gonna come back eventually and that was good. 
um, the storyline with the aliens because uh, through the whole series you, they always talk about alien artifacts and this one I, I, I liked how I like how it's a, it is a hard sci-fi it is hard sci-fi because sometimes it's a little too hard if I have to make one complaint about it sometimes it goes on a little too much about the technical stuff I think um, they spent like a paragraph explaining a, a thumb drive but it was a cool thumb drive that Murderbot could take off but I'm like yeah it's just like a thumb drive call it a they explained what a thumb drive was instead of just saying a thumb drive. I remember that. But, uh, where was I? Uh, the alien technology. I like how, uh, in this world, they talk about the wormholes and alien artifacts like it's just an everyday thing. Yeah, we've been dealing with forever. And they talk about how the alien artifacts, usually it's just a virus and it, it messes people up. And there, that's why there's rules. There's rules. We always, we're so used to it that there are rules to the alien artifacts. We haven't seen any aliens. Aliens. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe in the next book we'll see aliens. Well, this book we got the alien artifacts, but it was really more... A, a colony went there, got infected. It was one of the lost colonies, and it got infected. And then another company came by, and that got infected too. And then years and years later, another company came by because they had some mixed old technology. It sounded like that one of them had an iPhone or you know a smartphone. They said uh, I can't remember the language that they used, but it made it sound like it had an, a phone on a selfie stick. At least that's what, because they were saying how, how it was using old, uh, old ass technology and old languages because it was, that colony got lost years, 30 years ago or whatever it was. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, Art had to save his family. There's a good scene when, when Murderbot has to split his conscience. He makes a Murderbot point two, 2.0. And they say, uh, they tease him like, oh, it's a baby. You made a baby with art. And that was funny. Which is kind of which or And then end up saying, uh, Murder Bar 2.0, uh, save the day at the end too. So that was very nice. Uh, very well written, all these books. Uh, how did it end? Uh, well, save the day. They destroyed, uh, there was some kind of alien. It was like a hive, it was like a hive mind. And then... Uh, out of out of the pod came the original alien or whatever it was, and they killed that one because uh, Murderbot couldn't. He was afraid to get infected because then it would have replaced him instead. But save the day, like I said, it's very episodic, but that's okay. Uh, uh, you kind of figure it out going in if it's gonna. But I did like how it has a continuous storyline too. So you do have to, if you want to get the whole picture, you have to read them all. But very good action in this one. It was a whole novel. So, uh, but you meet Dr. Zen's, uh, more, more of Dr. M's family. You know, and just more of uh, Murderbot's family. And it ends with uh, the art, uh, art and Murderbot right off to the sunset. Well, there, they, there's a question at the end. Because Art saying, well, I could use your help. Because... It is funny how Art and Murderbot had their little relationship and they were bickering basically and then they made up and it was fun. But uh, it ends with Art asking Murderbot, hey, should I go? Can you go with me? Do you want to go with me? And then they have a conversation with Dr. M. Murderbot has a conversation with Dr. M. And he says, or she says, well, do what you want. What do you feel like? And it kind of leaves the question open. But I did enjoy the aliens, uh, artifacts, and I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the whole series. Can't wait for number seven to come out later on this year. See where Art, and I'm pretty sure Art and Murderbop is probably going to go off on their own adventure. And this is the book where I really felt, because the whole through line in Murderbot is that that she, she it, he loves Murderbot. Murderbot loves uh, TV series. Uh, the rise and fall of Saturn or something like that. The rise and fall of, I can't remember the name, but uh, it loves the TV shows. And those TV shows are uh, about spaceship crews and their robots. And this, I finally, it took me a while to figure it out. Like, these are their own little series. This is their own little murderbot kind of 
a television show where this is him with his family and everything. So I'm enjoying it. This video is long enough. I'm glad I made it. I'm glad I got all my thoughts in. So when number seven comes out, I hope this was a reminder for you guys. I hope it wasn't too much of a rant. I, I know I go all over the place and I'm not using the correct terms, but thank you for sticking with me. Uh, if there's anything I'm missing, like I said, if you haven't read this or my non-spoilers, but all right. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Keep on keeping on.